Clara Johnson, a 75-year-old black woman, lived a life filled with silent suffering. She had moved in with her daughter Vanessa, hoping for comfort in her old age, but instead she found herself trapped in a cycle of emotional abuse. Vanessa, once a loving daughter, had become bitter and cruel, directing her anger and disappointment towards Clara. The house, once a warm and welcoming home, had turned cold and uninviting, filled with tension and unspoken pain. Clara spent her days performing household chores, trying to avoid Vanessa's sharp tongue. Despite the constant belittlement, Clara held on to the memories of better days, when her relationship with Vanessa was filled with love and laughter, but these memories were bittersweet, reminding her of the distance that had grown between them. Clara clung to her faith, praying for strength and hoping for a change, but each day felt heavier than the last. Despite the pain, Clara maintained a quiet dignity, finding solace in small moments of joy, sunlight streaming through the window, the scent of flowers in the garden. She had always been a strong woman, and even now she tried to remain hopeful, believing that somehow things would get better. Yet the reality of her situation was inescapable, and Clara knew that she was slowly losing the strength to keep enduring the cruelty she faced every day. Vanessa, now in her late forties, was consumed by bitterness and resentment. Life had not turned out the way she had hoped, and she blamed Clara for many of her own disappointments. The dreams Vanessa once had of a successful career and a fulfilling life had slipped away, leaving her with a deep-seated anger that she directed at the one person who had always been there for her, her mother. Vanessa's cruelty was a way of coping with her own sense of failure. She mocked Clara's frailty, dismissed her needs, and constantly reminded her of her dependence, using every opportunity to assert her control. What had once been a relationship built on love and respect had deteriorated into something toxic, with Vanessa lashing out at Clara in an attempt to deal with her own unresolved pain. Despite her harsh treatment, Vanessa still felt a deep, unspoken guilt. She knew that her behavior was wrong, but she was trapped in a cycle of anger and regret that she couldn't escape. The bitterness that had taken root in Vanessa's heart was destroying not just her relationship with Clara, but also her own sense of self. She knew she needed to change, but she didn't know how to break free from the anger that had consumed her. Vanessa's resentment was fueled by a lifetime of unmet expectations and unfulfilled dreams. She had always felt that Clara had placed too much pressure on her, expecting her to live up to standards that she could never achieve. Over the years, this resentment had grown into something darker, turning Vanessa's love for her mother into a source of pain and anger. Vanessa blamed Clara for the path her life had taken, convinced that her mother's overprotection and high expectations were the reasons she had failed to achieve her goals. This belief allowed Vanessa to justify her cruel behavior, seeing it as a way to reclaim some of the control she felt she had lost. Yet deep down, Vanessa knew that the real source of her anger was her own sense of inadequacy and disappointment. Despite her outward hostility, Vanessa was deeply unhappy with the person she had become. She felt isolated and alone, cut off from the dreams she once had and the people who cared about her. Vanessa's resentment was a mask for her own pain, and as much as she tried to blame Clara, she knew that the real work of healing had to start within herself. But the journey towards self-acceptance seemed too daunting, and so Vanessa remained trapped in her cycle of bitterness. 4. Clara's Silent Tears Clara had always been a strong woman, but the constant humiliation was wearing her down. She cried often, though never in front of Vanessa. Clara's tears were a private thing, something she did alone in her small room, where she could release the pain that she kept hidden from the world. The tears were for the love she still felt for Vanessa, for the daughter who had become a stranger, and for the life that had taken such a cruel turn in her final years. 
Each night, Clara would lie in bed, trying to stifle her sobs so that Vanessa wouldn't hear. She wept for the relationship they had lost, for the connection that had been replaced by anger and bitterness. Clara's heart ached with the weight of her sadness, but she knew that she couldn't let herself give in to despair. She held on to the hope that things might change, that Vanessa might find a way back to the love they once shared. During the day, Clara would put on a brave face, going about her chores and trying to avoid conflict. She knew that she had to keep going, to stay strong for both herself and Vanessa. But the silent tears continued to fall, a testament to the depth of Clara's pain and the strength of her enduring love for her daughter. Despite everything, Clara couldn't bring herself to stop loving Vanessa, even as her heart was breaking. 5. Memories of Better Days Clara often found herself lost in memories of better days when her relationship with Vanessa was filled with love and laughter. She remembered the times when Vanessa was a little girl, full of life and curiosity, always eager to learn from her mother. Those memories were bittersweet, a reminder of the bond they once shared and the love that had once been so strong between them. Clara would sit by the window, looking out at the world beyond, and replay these memories in her mind, searching for clues as to when things had gone wrong. She wondered if there was something she could have done differently, something that could have prevented the rift that now separated them. But no matter how much she tried to hold on to the past, the present reality was inescapable. Despite the pain these memories brought, Clara clung to them as a source of comfort. They were a reminder of the love she still felt for Vanessa and the hope that one day they might find their way back to each other. Clara knew that the journey ahead would be difficult, but she held on to the belief that the love they once shared was still there, buried beneath the layers of hurt and anger. 6. The Daily Ritual of Humiliation Every day for Clara followed a familiar painful pattern. From the moment she woke up to the moment she went to bed, she was subjected to Vanessa's constant criticism and belittlement. What had once been small, hurtful comments had grown into a daily ritual of humiliation, a routine that Clara endured with quiet resignation. Vanessa's words cut deep, leaving scars that Clara tried to hide, but the emotional toll was becoming increasingly difficult to bear. Clara's mornings began with preparing breakfast, an act that had become fraught with anxiety. No matter how much care she put into it, Vanessa always found something to criticize. Clara would stand silently as Vanessa mocked her efforts, each word a reminder of the powerlessness she felt. Despite the pain, Clara remained silent, knowing that any attempt to defend herself would only lead to more anger and hurt. Throughout the day, Clara tried to keep herself busy with household chores, finding solace in the routines that gave her some sense of control. She hummed softly to herself as she worked, trying to drown out the echoes of Vanessa's harsh words, but no matter how hard she tried, the weight of the daily humiliation hung over her, a constant reminder of the life she was trapped in. Clara's spirit was slowly being worn down, but she held on to the hope that somehow things would change. 7. Clara's Unseen Strength Despite the constant humiliation, Clara possessed an inner strength that Vanessa couldn't see. Her resilience had been forged over a lifetime of challenges, and even now, in the face of Vanessa's cruelty, Clara refused to let herself be defined by it. She carried herself with quiet dignity, finding small ways to maintain her sense of self and her connection to the world beyond the confines of her home. Clara's strength came from her deep well of love, both for herself and for Vanessa. Clara's strength was also evident in the way she continued to hope for a better future. Even as the days grew darker, Clara never stopped believing that things could improve, that Vanessa might one day find a way back to the person she once was, 
This hope gave Clara the courage to endure, to keep going even when the weight of her circumstances threatened to overwhelm her. She prayed every day, asking for the strength to forgive Vanessa and the wisdom to find a path forward. In the quiet moments of the day, when the house was still and the pain seemed too much to bear, Clara would remind herself of her own worth. She knew that she was more than the sum of Vanessa's hurtful words, that she had lived a life of integrity and love. This knowledge was a source of comfort and strength for Clara, a reminder that no matter how much she was pushed down, she would always rise again. 8. Isolation and Loneliness Clara's world had become incredibly small. Once surrounded by friends and a bustling community, she now found herself isolated and alone. Vanessa had systematically cut Clara off from her social connections, insisting that they didn't need anyone else. As a result, Clara's days were marked by a deep sense of loneliness. The walls of the house felt like a prison and the silence was suffocating. Clara missed the joy of conversation the warmth of human connection, and the simple pleasure of being around people who cared for her. The isolation was not just physical, but emotional as well. Clara's relationship with Vanessa had become one of fear and tension, with no space for the love and support that had once defined it. Clara felt like a ghost in her own home, existing in the shadows while Vanessa lived her life around her. The loneliness was a constant companion, and there were times when Clara wondered if anyone would notice if she were gone. Despite the pain of isolation, Clara tried to maintain some connection to the outside world. She watched the news, read books, and occasionally wrote letters to old friends, though she never sent them. These small acts helped her feel less alone, reminding her that there was still a world beyond the walls of her home. But even these connections were fragile, and Clara often felt like she was fading away, forgotten by the world she once knew. 9. A Daughter's Unspoken Anger Vanessa's anger was a constant presence, simmering just beneath the surface. Although she rarely spoke about the reasons for her resentment, it was clear that she blamed Clara for many of her own disappointments. Vanessa had once been a bright and ambitious young woman, but her dreams had crumbled under the weight of unmet expectations and unfulfilled desires. She felt trapped in a life she didn't want, and she directed her frustration at the one person who had always been there, her mother. Vanessa's anger was complex and rooted in years of unresolved emotions. She felt that Clara had held her back, had been too controlling, and had imposed unrealistic expectations on her. In Vanessa's mind, Clara was responsible for the path her life had taken, and she couldn't forgive her mother for it. But deeper still, Vanessa was angry at herself, angry for not having achieved more, for not being happier, and for not being able to escape the shadow of her past. This unspoken anger created an atmosphere of tension and unease in the house. Vanessa's emotions were like a storm waiting to break, and Clara, sensing this, tried to navigate around them as best as she could. She tiptoed through her days, doing everything she could to avoid triggering Vanessa's wrath. But the anger was always there, lurking just below the surface, threatening to erupt at any moment. As the months passed, Clara's hope began to fade. The once strong belief that things could get better was slowly being eroded by the daily grind of humiliation and loneliness. Clara had always been an optimist, believing in the power of love and patience to overcome any obstacle. But now, she found it harder and harder to hold on to that hope. Each day felt like a repetition of the last with no end in sight to the pain and isolation she was enduring. Clara's faith, which had been a source of strength for her throughout her life, was also being tested. She prayed every day, asking for guidance and strength, but the answers seemed distant, and the comfort she once found in her faith felt increasingly out of reach. Clara began to wonder if her prayers were being heard, if the future she longed for was even possible. 
She felt like she was drifting further and further from the life she had known, lost in a sea of despair. Despite these feelings, Clara tried to maintain some semblance of hope. She would remind herself of the good times, of the love she still held for Vanessa, and of the possibility that things could change. But as each day passed without any sign of improvement, that hope grew dimmer. Clara's once vibrant spirit was being slowly suffocated by the weight of her circumstances, and she feared that she might never find her way back to the light. As Clara's hope faded, Vanessa began to unravel. The weight of her own guilt and anger, coupled with the stress of maintaining a facade of control, was taking its toll. Vanessa found herself becoming more volatile, her moods swinging wildly from one extreme to another. She would lash out at Clara over the smallest things, only to retreat into silence and self-loathing afterward. Vanessa's inner turmoil was becoming harder to contain, and it was spilling over into every aspect of her life. Vanessa's work, which had once been a source of pride and distraction, was now suffering. She struggled to focus, her thoughts constantly returning to the tension at home. Her interactions with colleagues became strained, and she began isolating herself, avoiding social events and conversations. Vanessa's world was shrinking, just as Clara's had, and she felt increasingly trapped in a life that she couldn't escape. The more she tried to assert control over her environment, the more it seemed to slip through her fingers. At home, Vanessa's behavior became more erratic. She would go from cruel outbursts to tearful apologies, but the cycle of anger and regret never ended. Vanessa knew that she was hurting her mother, but she felt powerless to stop herself. The guilt gnawed at her, but instead of addressing it, she would bury it deeper, adding more layers to the emotional walls she had built around herself. Vanessa was spiraling, and she knew it, but she couldn't bring herself to ask for help. Unbeknownst to Vanessa, Clara's brother James had decided to pay a visit. James, who lived several states away, had lost touch with Clara over the years. Their phone calls had become infrequent, and visits were rare, but James had always held a deep love and concern for his sister. Sensing that something wasn't right, he decided to make an unannounced visit, hoping to reconnect and offer whatever support he could. James arrived at the house on a bright, sunny afternoon, his heart filled with anticipation and a bit of worry. He hadn't seen Clara in over a year, and he was eager to catch up with her. But as he knocked on the door and waited for it to open, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The house, once a place of warmth and welcome, now seemed cold and uninviting. When Vanessa opened the door, her expression was one of surprise and discomfort, not the warm greeting James had expected. Vanessa was taken aback by her uncle's sudden arrival. She hadn't prepared for visitors, and the last thing she wanted was for someone to see the tension that had taken over her home. She greeted James politely, but there was a stiffness in her demeanor that James couldn't ignore. As he entered the house, he immediately noticed the change in atmosphere. The once lively home was now eerily quiet, and there was a palpable sense of unease. James's presence in the house brought an unexpected shift. Vanessa, who was used to having control over the household, found herself on edge with her uncle around. She knew that James was perceptive and that it would be difficult to hide the strained relationship she had with Clara. Vanessa tried to maintain a facade of normalcy, but the tension in the air was palpable. James, meanwhile, observed everything with quiet concern, noting the strained interactions and the way Clara seemed to shrink in Vanessa's presence. James's arrival also had a profound effect on Clara. For the first time in what felt like years, she felt a glimmer of hope. James had always been her protector, the older brother who looked out for her when they were children. His presence reminded her of happier times, and she couldn't help but feel a sense of relief that someone was there who might be able to see through the facade and understand what was really going on. As the days passed, James tried to engage both Vanessa and Clara in conversation. 
but the underlying tension was impossible to ignore. Vanessa was curt and defensive, her responses clipped and guarded, while Clara seemed hesitant to speak as if she was afraid of saying the wrong thing. James grew more concerned with each passing day, realizing that something deeply troubling was happening between his sister and niece. James spent his days carefully observing the dynamics between Clara and Vanessa. He noticed how Vanessa's demeanor would change whenever Clara entered the room, how her tone would sharpen, her patience would thin, and her words would often carry a sting of bitterness. James also noticed the way Clara responded to Vanessa's presence, with a subtle shrinking of her shoulders, a lowering of her gaze, and a quietness that spoke volumes about the fear and pain she was hiding. The more James observed, the more certain he became that something was terribly wrong. He saw how Vanessa would snap at Clara over small things, how she would belittle her mother's efforts and dismiss her opinions as if they were inconsequential. James also noticed the way Clara would retreat into herself, avoiding confrontation and doing everything she could to keep the peace, even at the cost of her own dignity. James's concern grew with each passing day. He began to piece together the reality of the situation, recognizing that Clara was living under a constant cloud of emotional abuse. The signs were all there, the isolation, the fear, the erosion of Clara's once vibrant spirit. James felt a deep sense of guilt for not having realized sooner how bad things had become. He knew he needed to act, but he wasn't sure how to approach Vanessa without pushing her further away or causing more harm to Clara. As James began to delve deeper into the situation, he noticed the subtle signs of trouble that Clara had been hiding. Her once vibrant personality had dimmed, replaced by a subdued and almost resigned demeanor. Clara was no longer the strong, independent woman he remembered. Instead, she seemed to have lost her sense of self, her confidence eroded by years of constant belittlement and isolation. James could see the toll that the emotional abuse had taken on her, and it broke his heart. Clara's physical appearance also showed signs of neglect. She had lost weight, her clothes hung loosely on her frail frame, and there were dark circles under her eyes from sleepless nights. The house, too, bore the marks of Clara's decline. What had once been a warm and welcoming home was now cold and bare, with little signs of the loving care Clara had always taken pride in. James could see that Clara was just going through the motions, her energy drained by the daily struggle to maintain some semblance of normalcy in an increasingly toxic environment. These subtle signs of trouble only strengthened James's resolve to help his sister. He knew that Clara was too proud and too scared to ask for help, but he also knew that she couldn't continue living this way. James decided that he needed to intervene, to find a way to get through to both Clara and Vanessa before it was too late. He couldn't stand by and watch his sister suffer any longer, and he was determined to do whatever it took to bring her the peace and safety she deserved. On a quiet afternoon, James found the opportunity he had been waiting for to talk to Clara alone. Vanessa had gone out, leaving the house in a rare state of calm. James approached Clara gently, sensing her reluctance to open up, but also knowing that she needed someone to confide in. He began by reminiscing about their childhood, sharing memories that brought a faint smile to Clara's face. Then, carefully, he steered the conversation towards the present, expressing his concern for her well-being. At first, Clara tried to brush off James's concerns, insisting that everything was fine. But James persisted, his tone gentle but firm. He told Clara that he had noticed the changes in her, the sadness in her eyes, and the fear that seemed to shadow her every step. James reassured Clara that she could trust him, that he was there to help, not to judge. Slowly, Clara's defences began to crumble, and the pain she had been hiding for so long started to surface. With tears in her eyes, Clara finally opened up about the emotional abuse she had been enduring. 
She spoke of the constant belittlement, the isolation, and the fear that had become a part of her daily life. Clara admitted that she had tried to stay strong for Vanessa's sake, hoping that her daughter would eventually come around, but the years of suffering had worn her down. Clara's voice trembled as she spoke, the weight of her pain evident in every word. After Clara's painful revelation, James knew that he had to confront Vanessa. He understood that this was a delicate situation, one that could easily escalate if handled poorly. But he also knew that he couldn't ignore the reality of what Clara had been enduring. James waited for Vanessa to return home, preparing himself for a difficult conversation. When she finally walked through the door, James asked to speak with her privately, his tone serious but calm. Vanessa, sensing that something was wrong, reluctantly agreed to the conversation. As they sat down, James began by expressing his concerns for Clara's well-being. He spoke carefully, explaining that he had noticed the tension in the house and the changes in Clara, and that he wanted to understand what was happening. Vanessa feeling cornered, immediately became defensive, denying any wrongdoing and accusing James of interfering in matters that didn't concern him. But James was undeterred. He calmly but firmly pointed out the signs of emotional abuse he had observed and the fear and sadness that Clara had finally confided in him. Vanessa's defensiveness began to crack under the weight of her uncle's words. She lashed out, blaming Clara for her own frustrations and unhappiness, but there was a note of desperation in her voice. James listened patiently, waiting for the moment when Vanessa's anger would give way to the deeper emotions she was struggling to suppress. In the days following the confrontation, Vanessa struggled to come to terms with the reality of her actions. She had always justified her behaviour towards Clara as a reaction to her own pain and disappointment, but now, faced with the truth, she had to confront the damage she had caused. Vanessa found herself vacillating between guilt and defensiveness, unsure of how to begin making things right. Vanessa's initial reaction was to withdraw even further, avoiding both James and Clara as much as possible. She spent hours alone in her room, replaying the confrontation in her mind and wrestling with the feelings it had stirred up. Vanessa knew that she had hurt her mother deeply, but she was also grappling with the anger and resentment that had driven her to act the way she had. It was easier to blame Clara than to face her own failures, but Vanessa knew that continuing to do so would only lead to more pain. Eventually, Vanessa realized that she needed to take responsibility for her actions if she wanted any chance of healing the rift between her and Clara. She started by acknowledging her own feelings, allowing herself to grieve the life she had hoped for but never achieved. Vanessa began to understand that her anger towards Clara was a reflection of her own inner turmoil, not a result of anything her mother had done. This realization was both painful and liberating, as it allowed Vanessa to see Clara not as the cause of her pain, but as a fellow human being who had also suffered. As Vanessa began the difficult process of confronting her own demons, James continued to support both her and Clara. He could see that Vanessa was struggling, but he also saw that she was trying to make things right. James knew that the road to healing would be long and fraught with challenges, but he was determined to help his family through it. He spent time with both Clara and Vanessa, encouraging open communication and helping them navigate the difficult emotions that had been stirred up. James also knew that there was still much that needed to be said between Clara and Vanessa. The years of pain and misunderstanding had created a deep rift between them, and it would take time and effort to bridge that gap. James urged both his sister and his niece to be honest with each other, to speak the truths they had been holding back for so long. He knew that only by facing the past head-on could they hope to build a better future. Clara, still fragile from the years of emotional abuse, was hesitant at first. She feared that confronting the past would only lead to more pain, 
but James reassured her that this was a necessary step in the healing process. He encouraged Clara to share her feelings, to let Vanessa know how deeply she had been hurt, but also to express the love and forgiveness that Clara still held in her heart. James knew that this would be a difficult conversation, but he believed that it was one that needed to happen. The day of the conversation arrived, and the atmosphere in the house was tense. Clara and Vanessa sat down together, with James nearby for support. The silence between mother and daughter was heavy, filled with years of unspoken words and unresolved emotions. James gently encouraged them to start talking, reminding them that this was a safe space for honesty and that they were not alone in this journey. Clara was the first to speak. Her voice trembled as she began to share her feelings, recounting the pain she had endured over the years. She spoke of the love she had always had for Vanessa, but also of the hurt and confusion she felt as her daughter's behaviour grew increasingly cruel. Clara's words were filled with emotion, but there was no anger, only a deep, abiding sadness for the relationship that had been lost. She expressed her desire to understand Vanessa, to know what had caused such a drastic change in their relationship. Vanessa listened in silence, her heart heavy with guilt and regret. When it was her turn to speak, she struggled to find the right words. Vanessa confessed that her actions were driven by her own pain and disappointment, that she had taken out her frustrations on Clara because she didn't know how else to cope. She admitted that she had felt trapped in a life she didn't want, and instead of seeking help, she had directed her anger towards the one person who had always been there for her. After the intense conversation with Clara, Vanessa found herself emotionally drained. The weight of years of suppressed guilt, anger and sadness had finally come crashing down on her, leaving her feeling exposed and vulnerable. For the first time, she was forced to confront the full extent of the pain she had caused, not only to Clara, but also to herself. Vanessa retreated to her room, where she allowed herself to break down completely, releasing the tears she had held back for so long. Alone in her room, Vanessa's mind raced through memories of her life, moments of disappointment, the dreams that had slipped away, and the choices that had led her to this point. She realized that she had been punishing Clara for things that were beyond her control, projecting her own failures onto her mother instead of facing them herself. The realization was devastating, and Vanessa couldn't help but feel overwhelmed by the enormity of her mistakes. Despite the anguish she was feeling, Vanessa also experienced a sense of relief. The burden of secrecy and denial had been lifted, and for the first time she felt like she could begin to heal. Vanessa knew that she still had a long way to go, that she needed to seek professional help and work through the deep-seated issues that had fueled her behavior. But the breakdown, painful as it was, marked the beginning of a new chapter one where she could finally start to rebuild her life and her relationship with Clara. With the breakthrough in their relationship, Clara and Vanessa began to face the past together. They spent long hours talking, revisiting old memories, and discussing the events that had led to the breakdown of their relationship. These conversations were not always easy. They were filled with moments of pain and regret as both mother and daughter confronted the mistakes and misunderstandings that had accumulated over the years. Clara shared stories from Vanessa's childhood, reminding her of the bond they once shared. She spoke of the hopes and dreams she had for Vanessa and how proud she had always been of her daughter's accomplishments. Clara also admitted that she had made mistakes, that she may have been too protective at times, and that she regretted any pressure she had placed on Vanessa to live up to certain expectations. These admissions were difficult for Clara, but they were necessary for the healing process. Vanessa, in turn, opened up about her own struggles, her feelings of inadequacy, the pressure she felt to succeed, and the resentment that had built up as she watched her dreams slip away. 
She spoke candidly about how these feelings had festered over the years, leading her to lash out at Clara as a way of coping with her own pain. Vanessa's honesty was a revelation, and it allowed both her and Clara to understand each other in a way they hadn't before. As Clara and Vanessa worked on healing their relationship, they also had to address the broader family dynamics that had contributed to the strain between them. James played a crucial role in this process, acting as a mediator and helping both women navigate the difficult emotions that had arisen. He encouraged open communication, urging Clara and Vanessa to speak honestly about their feelings, not just with each other, but with the rest of the family as well. The fractured bonds within the family were not limited to just Clara and Vanessa. There were other relationships that had been affected by years of silence and misunderstanding. James knew that in order for the family to truly heal, they needed to address these issues as well. He reached out to other family members, inviting them to join in the conversations and to be a part of the healing process. Slowly, the walls that had been built up over the years began to come down, and the family started to reconnect in a meaningful way. The process of healing the family's fractured bonds was not easy, and there were moments of tension and disagreement, but through it all, Clara and Vanessa remained committed to rebuilding their relationship and repairing the damage that had been done. With James's support, they were able to navigate the challenges and begin to create a new sense of unity within the family. With the family beginning to come together, Clara and Vanessa focused on continuing their personal healing journey. Vanessa began attending therapy, where she worked on unpacking the deep-seated issues that had contributed to her behavior. Therapy was a difficult process for Vanessa, forcing her to confront painful truths about herself and her past. But it was also a transformative experience, helping her to gain insight into her actions and to start building healthier coping mechanisms. Clara, too, was on her own path to healing. She found solace in reconnecting with old friends and re-engaging with her community. Clara had spent so many years isolated that she had forgotten the joy that came from being surrounded by people who cared for her. As she re-entered the social circles she had once been a part of, Clara began to rediscover her own sense of self-worth and independence. It was a slow process, but with each step, Clara felt her spirit begin to revive. The healing process was not without its challenges. There were moments when old patterns of behavior threatened to resurface, when Vanessa would slip back into defensiveness or Clara would retreat into silence. But these moments became less frequent as they continued to work on their relationship. Clara and Vanessa learned to communicate more openly, to express their feelings without fear of judgment, and to support each other through the ups and downs of their journey. Clara's journey to forgiveness was not a simple one. Despite her deep love for Vanessa, the years of emotional abuse had left scars that couldn't be easily erased. Clara had to confront her own feelings of hurt and betrayal, acknowledging the pain that Vanessa's actions had caused. Yet, Clara was a woman of immense compassion, and her love for her daughter had always been at the core of who she was. Forgiving Vanessa was an essential part of Clara's healing, not just for Vanessa's sake, but for her own peace of mind. Vanessa, aware of the immense hurt she had caused, was deeply grateful for Clara's forgiveness. She knew that she didn't deserve it, and that Clara's willingness to forgive her was a testament to her mother's enduring love and grace. This realization deepened Vanessa's resolve to change, to become a better daughter and a better person. Vanessa saw Clara's forgiveness as a gift, one that she was determined not to squander. It became a source of motivation for Vanessa, driving her to continue her own journey of healing and self-improvement. The act of forgiveness also strengthened the bond between mother and daughter. It created a space where Clara and Vanessa could rebuild their relationship on new terms, free from the bitterness and resentment that had once defined it. Clara's forgiveness was a powerful act of love, 
one that allowed both her and Vanessa to move forward with a renewed sense of hope and possibility. They knew that there was still work to be done, but they also knew that they had the strength and the love to see it through. Even as Clara extended her forgiveness, Vanessa struggled with feelings of guilt. She was haunted by the memories of how she had treated her mother, the cruel words and actions that had caused so much pain. Vanessa found it difficult to forgive herself, feeling that she didn't deserve the kindness and compassion that Clara was showing her. This guilt weighed heavily on Vanessa, threatening to pull her back into the negative patterns of behavior she was trying so hard to escape. Therapy became a crucial outlet for Vanessa as she worked through these complex emotions. Her therapist helped her to understand the roots of her guilt and to develop healthier ways of coping with it. Vanessa learned that while guilt could be a powerful motivator for change, it could also be destructive if left unchecked. She was encouraged to focus on the positive steps she was taking, to acknowledge her progress and to forgive herself for her past mistakes. This was not an easy process, but it was a necessary one. As Vanessa continued on her path to redemption, she sought to make amends not just with Clara, but with herself. She took steps to rebuild her life, setting new goals and working towards a future that was aligned with her values. Vanessa also began to reconnect with the friends and family members she had distanced herself from, repairing the relationships that had been damaged by her anger and resentment. These efforts were part of Vanessa's journey towards self-acceptance, a journey that required patience, perseverance, and a willingness to embrace change. Throughout this challenging journey, James remained a steadfast source of support for both Clara and Vanessa. He had been the catalyst for change, the one who had recognized the need for intervention and had taken action. Now, as Clara and Vanessa navigated the difficult process of healing, James continued to be there for them, offering guidance, encouragement, and a listening ear whenever it was needed. James understood the importance of his role as a mediator. He was careful to balance his support for both Clara and Vanessa, ensuring that neither felt isolated or overwhelmed. For Clara, James provided the reassurance that she wasn't alone, that her family was there for her, and that she had the right to live her life with dignity and respect. For Vanessa, James was a source of accountability and encouragement, helping her to stay focused on her goals and to continue her personal growth. As time went on, James began to see the positive changes in both Clara and Vanessa. He saw the light returning to Clara's eyes, the way she had begun to reclaim her sense of self and independence. He also saw the determination in Vanessa, the way she was working to rebuild her life and her relationships. James was proud of both of them, and he felt a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that he had played a part in their journey towards healing. His support had been instrumental in helping Clara and Vanessa find their way back to each other, and it was something that he would always cherish. Rebuilding trust was one of the most challenging aspects of Clara and Vanessa's journey. Trust, once broken, takes time and effort to restore, and both women understood that it would not happen overnight. They had to learn to trust each other again, to believe in the sincerity of their words and actions, and to let go of the fears and doubts that had taken root over the years. This required patience, open communication, and a willingness to be vulnerable with each other. For Clara, rebuilding trust meant allowing herself to believe in Vanessa's commitment to change. It meant taking small steps towards opening up, sharing her thoughts and feelings without fear of judgment or ridicule. Clara had to overcome the instinct to protect herself, to shield her heart from the possibility of being hurt again. This was not easy, but with each positive interaction, Clara's confidence in Vanessa grew, and the walls she had built around her heart began to come down. For Vanessa, rebuilding trust meant proving herself through consistent actions. 
She knew that words alone would not be enough to heal the wounds she had caused. She needed to show Clara that she was truly committed to change. Vanessa made an effort to be more present, more attentive, and more caring in her interactions with Clara. She sought to create positive experiences, moments that would replace the painful memories of the past and help to rebuild the bond they once shared. As Clara and Vanessa continued their journey of healing, they began to develop a new understanding of each other. The conversations they had shared, the truths they had uncovered, and the steps they had taken towards forgiveness and trust had transformed their relationship. Clara came to see Vanessa not just as her daughter, but as a woman who had faced her own struggles and pain. She understood that Vanessa's actions, while hurtful, were rooted in deeper issues that needed compassion and support to be addressed. Vanessa, in turn, gained a new appreciation for Clara's strength and resilience. She saw her mother not just as the person she had blamed for her own disappointments, but as a woman who had endured tremendous hardship and had always done her best to provide for her family. Vanessa realized that she had been unfair in her judgments and that she had underestimated the sacrifices Clara had made for her. This realization deepened Vanessa's respect for Clara and fueled her desire to make amends. With this new understanding came a sense of mutual respect and empathy. Clara and Vanessa began to relate to each other in a more positive and supportive way, recognizing the importance of their relationship and the need to nurture it. They started to find joy in each other's company, sharing moments of laughter and light-heartedness that had been absent for so long. These moments were a testament to the progress they had made and the new dynamic they were creating. The culmination of Clara and Vanessa's journey was the rebirth of their family. What had once been a fractured and painful relationship was now a source of strength and joy for both women. They had faced their demons, confronted the past, and worked tirelessly to rebuild the trust and love that had been lost. Their efforts had paid off, and they now found themselves in a place of peace and mutual understanding. Family gatherings, once filled with tension and awkwardness, became joyful occasions where laughter and love were shared freely. Clara and Vanessa took pride in the progress they had made, and they were eager to share this newfound happiness with the rest of their family. The bonds that had been strained for so long were now stronger than ever, as each family member played a role in supporting the healing process. Clara, now in her later years, found a renewed sense of purpose and fulfillment. She had not only reclaimed her relationship with Vanessa, but she had also reconnected with the community and the world around her. Clara's home was once again filled with warmth and love, and she felt a deep sense of gratitude for the journey that had brought her and Vanessa back together. She knew that life would continue to present challenges, but she also knew that she had the strength and support to face them.